Oh, what is going on with your new week, the Chico Army? But if you're a newbie, no stripes. You're just a viewer of the tube. My name is Tyler, the host of the crypto channel that is proud to be from this area of California. It was burning on the, the wood down low and I didn't have any water. I had one barrel with like a little bit of water in it and I tried using that, it didn't work. He grabbed the only liquid he had left, cans of Bud Light. When I ripped up the sheet metal, it had a nail. So I was just shaking it up, popping it, and just spraying and throwing it down, grabbing another one. And my buddies always tease me about, uh, you know, drinking water beer. And I say, hey, save mine, my shop. <laughs> Shoot, fire trucks, blue and red, filled with Bud and Bud Light, logos of each on the trucks. Now that is marketing, and it could save our public service fire departments across the country. A win win, kind of like this episode. It's time for Chico Crypto. You know what else is a win-win? Scaling Ethereum right now. I ended last week's videos talking about it and I gotta keep talking about it because it's single-handedly the biggest issue facing the space right now. Daily transactions on Ethereum are reaching the 2017, early 2018 mania and fees have already exceeded what was hit back then in USD terms. Fees just keep going higher and higher with the average fee topping over $6.40 over the weekend. So to complete a Uniswap transaction, Action, it costs people too much money unless they're making trades in the thousands upon thousands of dollars. A retail trader who wants to swap a couple of bucks, not worth it. So who's going to fix this? Are we going to just wait around for Ethereum 2.0? Are we just going to wait around for roll-up technology to break through? Well, I'm sure you saw the surge of OMG network. It seemed like it wouldn't stop. It hit nine bucks for a time over the weekend, pushing it up into the top 30 coins with a market cap of over $1 billion. Now, when the public mainnet of OMG launched in early June, Vitalik himself dropped a tweet to congratulate them. That was early June. So why then this month, when someone asked if he was going to build on a different chain for scaling, Vitalik replied, Robston, Gorley, two Ethereum test nets, and XDAI with a published intent to migrate onto ETH2 or optimistic rollup when those are ready. He didn't mention OMG, he didn't mention Plasma, which is OMG's second layer scaling solution. He mentioned ETH2, which will have sharding and optimistic rollups. And here's the other interesting thing. There was a research group called Plasma Group who has been working on the Plasma solution for some time. They put out a blog post titled On to New Beginnings in January of this year. Before we get into those new beginnings, we can see their relation to OMG. They list their donors and they said this. Audits on the first version of OMG's Plasma framework, which took inspiration from Plasma Group's work on predicates, are nearly finished. It's exciting to see our work being used in the wild. And it's also a testament to Misego's commitment to that kind of cross-pollination that makes this space so special. So what is their new beginning? Well, Coindesk dropped this article in February of this year. Plasma became optimism, and it just might save Ethereum. Yeah, they are creating the OVM, the optimistic virtual machine, and the article states, we designed the OVM to be used as a drop-in replacement for the EVM inside of optimistic rollup. Yeah, going back to Vitalik's tweet, the optimistic rollup he was talking about. So again, why no mention of OMG for the scaling solution? Well, the thing here is OMG and its plasma solution, it can scale Ethereum right now in a basic form, aka the movement of value in tokens, but it cannot scale smart contracts, which dApp developers are relying on. Scaling smart contracts with Plasma is still in the R&D phase, which a major research group of theirs has dropped for the OVM. So could we see a protocol like Uniswap using Plasma and OMG? Well, before it was announced Plasma Group was switching to Optimism, they released a scaling solution in collaboration with Uniswap. Decrypt covered it. What was it? Well, the article states, Hayden Adams, CEO of Uniswap, told Decrypt that the achievement here is that Optimistic Rollup manages to accomplish all of this without using sidechains, which are more centralized, and without sacrificing the ability to create complex application. That's important for Adams Uniswap, which requires a lot of different parties to interact with each other. Make no mistake, 
optimistic rollup is not plasma. So right now, something like Uniswap with the UI, backend, and smart contracts cannot be built on a Mise Go. But the centralized exchanges can use it to transfer value. Two parties can. That is possible. And we know some are doing it. But unknown parties swapping value through liquidity pools? Not possible. But is the OVM possible right now? Well, according to their roadmap, we are coming up on just the testnet stage with a single sequencer mainnet not scheduled for this year. Obviously, they have an X in its place. So if you wanted to build a scalable Uniswap, where would you build it? Well, like Vitalik mentioned, the two test nets, wait for ETH2 and optimistic rollups, or the XDAI mainnet. And if you watch my video Friday, I showed it is on the mainnet, and there is a Uniswap beta already built, which is fast and gas fees are negligible. Now, remember how I have always said to follow the developers. What are they doing? Well, I'm sure you guys know of the Project Aragon, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization DAO protocol, which is no joke within the Ethereum community. They have a widespread net of Ethereum developers, building on the protocol with multiple teams listed. But let's scroll back up to the number one team. It's called OneHive. Now, the DAO developer community on OneHive have their own community currency called Honey, and they put out a blog post in July of this year explaining they were migrating it to the XDAI chain. Where did they leave from? Ethereum. But why? Well, they explain in the post, we want to do that as quickly and with as little friction as possible. So we have decided to launch Honey on XDAI, where there is very little network congestion and transaction fees are not a significant concern. This will allow us to focus on what matters most, building and circulating value within the Honey economy, while at the same time avoiding the friction caused by a widely volatile transaction fee market and uncertain timeline for practical scalability on Ethereum today. And if you didn't know, OneHive are the ones who created the Uniswap fork on XDAI. As we can see right there is their honey currency. So this is where we're at with the most scalable protocol that can host all the benefits of Ethereum smart contracts. The most robust one is XDAI stake. But the liquidity issue is a big problem. It was hard enough to get Uniswap to where it is today. How will XDAI get liquidity on its chain? Well, the developers, my friends, by Bridges and being a fully compatible sister chain right now. So Aragon has another subsection of their project called Aragon Experts, and there's a certain dev group we need to focus on, Raid Guild. Guess what they're building on XDAI? Well, XDAI tweeted about it. Check out the at Raid Guild wrap ETH dApp now available for XDAI. It's a simple way to wrap and unwrap XDAI to WXDAI. Just connect to the XDAI chain. Why XDAI? Wrap native tokens are useful for DEXs, swaps, and DAOs. Oh my. Now, I'm sure you're confused on why this is important. XDAI, wrapped XDAI. Well, XDAI is a stablecoin which lives on the XDAI chain. It's not directly compatible with Ethereum and Uniswap. This wrapper takes it from XDAI chain through a bridge and converts it to a compatible token for Uniswap on Ethereum's mainnet. Now, some may think this is complicated, but if you didn't know, Ethereum needs wrapped for every Uniswap transaction, as wrapped ETH is the largest pool on Uniswap. And as we can see, WETH is the ERC20 tradable version of Ethereum. So complicated, no, as it happens every transaction with Ethereum. It's a common occurrence happening every single Uniswap swap, every single one. So two major teams within Aragon and thus the Ethereum dev community have gone the way of XDAI, building infrastructure and tools to push forward the XDAI chain. I wonder why? Well, let me try and explain my theory. Now, if you did not know, Aragon is building their own Aragon chain, which is a proof of stake EVM compatible blockchain to host their DAOs. And as we can see, it's being built on the Cosmos SDK and Ether Mint. Now, Aragon has contracted out Chainsafe to build this for them. Here's the Medium post about it, posted in November of 2019. They say that yes, Aragon and them are working together to build the Aragon chain on Ethermint. But it says Ethermint is also being fully developed by Chainsafe. 
Now the last update regarding Aragon Chain, and thus Ethermint, was three months ago when a private test environment was announced by Chainsafe, June 1st. Then they said in the article a public testnet was coming soon, which will consist of two parts, two separate testnets. But then below they say this, within a few weeks they should be able to complete the remaining tasks for the first testnet and it would be live soon. Well, a few weeks turned into three months later and still there is no first public test net. And I don't think there is one coming soon. As if you go to the Chainsafe Ethermint GitHub, go to issues, there are over 40 open and many of them are on ice. So that chain is going to have to wait. I see it and I think the Aragon team does too. Why? Because in October of 2019, there was a forum discussion about the Aragon chain and a Greg the Greek is leading the discussion. Greg the Greek is a Gregory Marcuse, CTO of Chainsafe, and any e replies to a comment about using XDAI. He says, does this mean we can't use POA at all? Absolutely not. Block Scout is EVM compatible and does the job. We interface with it on our work with Ethereum Classic. We haven't written a full specification for the Aragon chain yet. Ultimately, we didn't find out about the decision to go with Ethermint until well after we handed off the report. The beautiful part of all this is that we have a large design space to work with and a lot of things have yet to be finalized. So there is discussion of XDAI. Now here is what's interesting to me. At the end of June, when the public testnet of Ethermint was supposed to ship, Aragon announced a hackathon called the Hack for Freedom event. It was a big event with big judges, including Jesse Polak from Coinbase. Now guess who won the hackathon? Well, number one, Aragon China, which is a sleek and simple Aragon client for the Chinese market. We can dive into the docs about it, and this is what was said. Recognizing that Ethereum gas fees are increasingly prohibitive to the DAO adoption, we have created the DAO builder in such a way that builders can choose to deploy their DAO on Ethereum or the XDAI blockchain. Which, if you go to the website to build a DAO, it sets itself to XDAI by default. Now, who else won? Who is a second listed? Well, going back to the tweet from Aragon, OneHive's Bright ID Faucet. Yes, OneHive we have already talked about. Who is building fully on XDAI? Now, who won best user experience? Aragon China. And below that runner up was Facebook Fly, FB Fly. What is this? Well, it's a way of bringing DAOs to Facebook groups, aka financial system for the groups, voting money and more. And the UI and setup is super simple. And going to their about, why do they have an about XDAI right there? Oh, because FB Fly DAOs are built on the XDAI chain. Now, I'm not saying Aragon chain will drop Ethermint for XDAI, but Ethermint, it's not ready and it won't be on the mainnet for a good while. So in the meantime, it's XDAI and the ecosystem may just force them to take another look or that ecosystem may grow where they can't stop it. Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time.